Well, welcome back to the uh, Senate Doctors Show. It is uh, the show for Tuesday, a couple days before Thanksgiving, and uh, we're delighted that you're joining us uh, this uh, holiday time. And uh, I'm John Barrasso, a U.S. Senator from Wyoming, also an orthopedic surgeon, and one of two uh, physicians who's also a senator. And I'm the other physician and the senator. I'm Tom Coburn from Oklahoma. I'm a family practitioner and obstetrician, and uh, Glad to be here with you, John. Good to be with you. We've been <coughs> working our way through these bills. The House passed bill I have over here, the Senate bill, that, and you've been pulling through it, and uh, you found some interesting things. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. It, on page 432 of the bill, section 2006, special adjustment to FMAT determination for certain states recovering from a major disaster. Can you explain to the viewers what... Uh, FMAP is the federal matching percentage that they contribute on on Medicaid to the state. And so what this does is for Louisiana, hmm. it gives them $100 million, just Louisiana, uh, over a period of years uh, for them. And it's interesting. Why, why we would we give it, why not Oklahoma or Wyoming? Well, uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, uh, I'm certainly it was effective in securing some votes. <clears throat> Two senators from that state. Mm -hmm. huh. Fascinating. Page 432. $100, yeah, $100 million dollars extra. For $100 million dollars extra for the state of Louisiana uh, for one senator, or maybe two, but I suspect just one, who actually is going to vote for the bill uh, because they got something for the bill. Amazing. Well, we love hearing from you. We do man in the street interviews. We go around and uh, ask for emails from you, and we have a, uh, a video question coming in now from Lisa from uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. Why don't we have single-payer health insurance? This country really needs it. Well, we can have it. <clears throat> I think what people need to know what happens <clears throat> is look around the rest of the world at <clears throat> what happens with single-payer health insurance, and what you see is not better outcomes. Uh, you see significant rationing. You see government-centered. If you look at the conflict in Canada, uh, where they finally had a Supreme Court ruling that because you have single payer and you get a wait in the line, that's not care. Um, the advantage of this country over many others is we have the best acute care in the world, we have the best cancer care in the world, we have the best cardiac care in the world. We have a lot of problems in our health care. A single payer will certainly cover everybody, but we won't be able to pay for it because we can't pay for the health care programs that we have today. So. It, we can do that, and that's one way to do it, but we need to understand what we're going to get when we do single-payer. We're going to get decreased innovation. Two, two out of three innovations in the world in healthcare come from this country. That's why we see increased life expectancy. The innovations that have come out of the scientist and medical community in this country have advanced the lives of, lives of people all across the world. So we can certainly do that, and there are 30% of Americans that really want that. Uh, but what, with that comes lower quality health care, not better quality health care. Well, I think we saw a little about that this past week when this one government agency said, you know, we shouldn't do mammograms for women between the ages of 40 and 50. Uh, and, you know, and after 75, <clears throat> stop doing them as well. Well, my, my wife is a breast cancer survivor. She was diagnosed at about the age of 49. Uh, my mother-in-law was diagnosed at about the age of 75. Uh, I think it's critical that women have those, and that's somebody getting between you and your doctor. And you know, right. we see in Canada and in uh, England where they have uh, a system like this single payer system, uh, where there is rationing of care. This is a way that this health care bill could be used to yeah, ration well, care. <clears throat> it's interesting in breast cancer, we have a 35 percent better survival rate than Canada or England on breast cancer. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. But the government <clears throat> deciding that takes that out of the hands of the doctor and the patient and puts it into the hands of a bureaucrat. Not only did they say we should stop mammograms, we should stop teaching women to do self-breast exam. And many of the breast, exam, breast tumors that are found are found by women on self-breast exam. Uh, and the earlier you find a cancer, the better in terms of longevity. Now, this government committee that came up with this, I understand there's no cancer specialist on this, no radiologist who no understand onco about uh, No oncologist. No, uh, I don't think there were any gynecologists no. there either. I mean, you look at the people that were on there, and to think of something that is even free, like a breast self-exam, well, that's a, yeah. it, this makes this makes no sense at all. But I think it's a showing the hand of what what a bad hand government can play, given that given them the opportunity, which is why and we have to stop. The this American bill. Cancer Society, of course, came out 
and refutes what they recommended. But this is a government agency, which this bill is going to have multitudes of. Have you counted how many different? No, we, we haven't got through all of them yet, uh, uh, but we will. We'll have that for you really soon. Uh, this is going to have multitude, and they're going to interfere. They're going to step between the doctor. The, the worst thing about this bill and single payer is that you no longer have your doctor totally devoted to you. Your doctor is, uh, loyalty is now divided between the government and you. And I don't want a physician that's looking to the government to take care of me. I want the physician looking at what's in my best interest, not what's in the, the government's uh, economic interest or uh, total budget interest. I want them looking at me, and then I want to make that decision personally. Well, when you look at this group, this, and they, they, they came up with this decision, I mean, it's comparative effectiveness research. Uh, the new legislation that just came out last night, it talks about using cost. Yeah. Using cost, not just clinical, yeah. but, but using cost to make a decision. About well, that's that sort what of this things. recommendation was yeah. based on, John. It was based on cost. And, and on a pure cost basis, they're absolutely right. Yeah. It doesn't pay. How many people do you have to screen to find one cancer? I think 1,900 the, they yeah, came up, they said. At, yeah. at this age versus the other. But if yeah, you're one of the, if you're, if, yeah. if you're that one. Yeah, if you're the one and we saved your life by screening you, that's important to you. But that's the whole problem with health care is we're disconnected from us making decisions, even through the insurance industry lots of times. But it has been a standard, and, and we're, even, we're even seeing new technology on early breast diagnosis with mammogram MRIs, which are even better. So what are we going to say? We know you can't do a mammogram MRI even though we could diagnose it at very, very early, early, early stages, which would give a better survival. We're going to say no because it costs too much. Well, how about let me make that decision as a patient or me and my doctor make that decision rather than a government bureaucracy make that decision? And if a government bureaucracy decides that they're not going to pay for this kind of care, which is what it comes down to, then a lot of private insurance may say, well, they're not paying, why should we? So I yeah. think it, that, it, that ripples across. Uh, but, you know, one of the number one causes, and we didn't really get into this in the last couple of shows, uh, of lawsuit abuse and, 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 and the suits that are filed, one of the number one causes of, of suits is a is delay in the diagnosis yeah. or failure to diagnose breast cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have a government saying, don't worry about it. I, I, I'm offended. Um, uh, email question coming in from uh, Gene from Michigan. Uh, Gene says, what do you believe to be the most effective way for me to let my senator know my thoughts about proposed legislation? Well, I think it's call them and email them. Mm -hmm. If they have town hall meetings, go to the town hall meetings. Uh, and, and if you have strong feelings, uh, then you should make sure you let them know, but you should make sure all your friends know to let them know. Well, Gene's from Michigan. Uh, my, my understanding is both of the senators from Michigan are supporting this. Right. So I'd say, Gene, call. Get, and I doubt that they're going to have town hall meetings over, th over Thanksgiving because they probably don't want to hear from people like Gene. Next question. Uh, coming in, this is uh, Irv from Las Vegas. Why isn't Congress covered by the same plans as the rest of America? It's a great question. They're covered by the same plans as all the other federal employees, but the, ask the question in reverse. Why isn't the rest of America covered with the same plans that we have? The, there's 283 plans we get to choose from. And, and uh, I, I looked at my pay stub uh, just last week, and my wife and I pay $800 a month for just the two of us, our share. Uh, that comes to $9,600 a year for our share. The government picks up a c component of that. And, and it's the Blue Cross standard. I have the Blue Cross standard. So the question ought to be is why don't you get to choose from 286 plans uh, where you get to make a decision about what fits with your budget? Okay. Makes sense. And I don't know how they've played it out in this. I haven't gotten all the way to the end of this bill, but we'll see if they mention it there, but they should. If you want to email us, just do it at doctors at src.senate.gov. Uh, next, an email question from Jane from Maryland. Jane says, hey, here's a good one. Who wrote the bill? Well, we don't know. Probably Ledge Council with the direction. You know, this has been a working project for six weeks for the, the majority leader, uh, but I'm sure it had lots of influence from people out off the hill. Uh, so we don't know the answer to that, and probably we'll never know the answer to who actually formulated the ideas in the bill. When it, it just for history and for civics sake, when somebody has an idea, if I have an idea for a bill, or Senator Barrasso does, 
we take the idea down to Ledge Council and they write the bill with the knowledge of the rest of the laws in this country and then advise us about which way you want to go. So Ledge Council was obviously involved in it, but who, who made the decisions uh, and how they made it? Well, you can see from the thing for Louisiana, it was a working project uh, process as they got different people to agree to vote for the bill based on what they gave them in the bill. So I suspect Mary Landrieu wrote page 432 for her. And $100 million was the right amount. Yeah. We have a question from a man on the street. This question from uh, San Francisco. I just want to make sure that our current plan doesn't go up in dollars and values and that we can keep the same doctors. Well, uh, I don't want to be insulting to her, but I think she might be Medicare eligible. And if she perhaps has Medicare Advantage, that's not going to happen mm -hmm. for her. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be markedly diminished. So you may not be able to keep the same doctors. But if you're not her and you're a young person, under the, what I think is going to happen under this plan because the penalty for not buying insurance is not great, is if you're young and healthy, you're going to drop your insurance. And you're going to pay the government tax for not having health insurance because as soon as you get sick, you can go get health insurance. So there's no incentive to have health insurance when you know you can go get it at any time and they cannot refuse you. Well, rates are going to go up for folks. There's, right. There's no, there's no way, question. No, no question about it. And uh, so for her kids, if they have their insurance through work, uh, it may impact on their ability to get a raise uh, if, they, if they get their insurance through work. The, the value I think people are going to get is going to be less. Whether they're going to be able to keep their same doctors I think is questionable. Uh, I, when I talk to young people and go over the specifics of community rating and the fact that the, the ratio of the, what, we, what young people are going to have to pay who are healthy and go to the gym and work out and exercise and eat right as opposed to somebody who sits around, eats too much, exercises too little and smokes there's not much difference in what they're going to be able to charge with this community rating and guaranteed access. Well, so where young people are going to be... Under 40 is going to pay a whole lot more. There's no question. If you're under 40 in this country, you're going to pay more for your health insurance yeah. under this plan. Yeah. Well, so we have another question coming in. Uh, Laurel. Well, I want to know is because if the employers um, can pay 8%, won't they then just pay the 8%? You know what I mean? Why would they continue to pay, like where I work, what they pay is like 7000 Ooh, I'm nervous. <laughs> and 8% would be like 2400 Okay. So it's, it's going to, you know, because of that will force me into that policy, okay. which I don't want. Well, I think she makes a great point. It, 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 she used the number 2400 8% of of X is $2,400, uh, uh, that'd be uh, $30,000 $30, a year. So th they can pay $2,400 versus they're paying 7000 as she said now. Sure, that, why wouldn't they? Especially if they have to live and with all the rules and regulations. Yeah, and they'll, of this and 20, they'll force you pay. into the government plan, mm -hmm. which already CBL O has said the government plan under the House bill, that bill, will be 4% higher than everybody else. So it's actually going to cost more, but we're going to subsidize that. And so that $2,400 tax is going to go to subsidy. It'll never work. It'll, it, financially, it'll never work. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting to note, when Medicare was estimated to cost X uh, when it was started in 1990, it cost 100 times what CBO estimated it to cost uh, 20 years later. So CBO missed it by 10,000%. 10,000% they missed it by. They underestimated. They underestimated. <laughs> and of course, this, ha this bill has uh, is, its real cost, not Washington Enron accounting, is $2.5 trillion, for which $500 billion comes out of Medicare, and there's about 600 and some odd billion worth of tax increases in it. Uh, and, and the other interesting things about this bill and that bill is it's like buying a house, John. If you go to buy a house, you get a mortgage and you have to start paying on it for five years. At the end of the fifth year, you get to move in. But you had to pay for it. Well, this bill, you don't get started getting any benefits from this till the year 2014. But the taxes start next year. So we're all gonna pay. And that's one of the reasons they can have a score because they only score it for 10 years. And when you look at the last, the 10th year, the costs out versus the revenues in, 
are out of whack because most of the money they collected when they weren't sending any money out. Well, it is going to be a fascinating month of December. It on is. The floor of the United States Senate, talking about all these things with amendments on the bills, trying to come up with ways to uh, help our people who are on Medicare, help those who uh, have insurance now who don't want to pay more, help people who are concerned about their care, help people who are worried about the government rules and the regulations. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's going to be an astonishing time for this country, and I would hope everybody at home, everybody who's watching, uh, tunes in. Stay, uh, you know, stay tuned in, listen to the debate, talk to your friends. As you hear things, call your states, call your U.S. senators, go to their state offices, uh, their home on weekends, go visit with them, tell them, demand town hall meetings, demand to meet with them, uh, you know, challenge them to show up and answer your questions uh, because this is going to be the major debate uh, probably from the past decades and future decades. This is probably the one that's going to have the biggest impact. Uh, in terms of the country and the time that we're in this. And it's certainly going to impact every single individual in this country. So with that, thanks so much for uh, being with us. We appreciate you uh, joining us. And uh, we'll be back again next Tuesday, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, for the Senate Doctor Show.